I was sitting on a bench placed at one of the parks on campus. During the past three weeks all I did was study for the Frankfurt test. The amount of stuff they wanted us to know in order to prepare for it was overwhelming, I wondered if all that would really be on the test. I was feeling a little lonely. I had gone several days without seeing Eddie. He told me that would be very busy for some weeks. I think he was right when he decided not to take this test, he wouldn't really have any time to study for it. In those past four months I hadn't really made a whole lot of friends. There was only Betsy who I seldom bumped into and a few classmates. Harvard really made people take their studying very seriously. In fact, I myself only started to feel lonely after about a month and a half into the semester due to such a hard study load. I would be going back and forth between the Frankfurt test and whatever I had to know for school. I guess everyone felt like that at least once in a while. But now that everything was so clear in my mind and there was nothing else for me to read, I really felt as if my heart was gaining weight. Maybe that was something similar to what the spirits at Oles Park were trying to express the day I went to visit my brother at his grave, I mean, loneliness and a deep need to share their feelings with someone. Thank God I had a choice. Joseph. I had already looked at her in class sometimes. She was pretty and had a long dark straight hair and an incredible and unique face. We had only exchanged a few words during class. I never imagined one day she would come up and talk to me. Remember me? I am Ron. From your class. Oh yes, of course I remember you. I am sorry. I have a lot on my mind right now. That's okay. It's just that while I was walking on the grass I noticed how distracted you were. I mean, focused. Yeah. I was thinking about the test I'm going to take this weekend. What test? Is it for some sort of job? Eddie was completely right, the freshman didn't even dream about the existence of that test. No. It's for a summer course in Germany. Wow, that's great. She sat by my side on the bench. You'll definitely do fine. My ego got a little bit puffy. What makes you say that? Are you kidding me? Everyone I've spoken with tells me you're a student master, almost a professor already. I had no idea you were that popular. Gosh. I am just interested on this subject. I am no better than anyone. That's not what I heard. Rumors say you dated a senior girl on your very first day here. Eddie, you bastard. That was the only thing that came to mind right after she said that. But since the dirty job had already been started, I figured I might as well finish it up. Well, I hope to have the same power over freshman girls, she looked at me and smiled. I did the same. I've never been a Casanova, but it would be nice to keep someone like Ron around. We talked some more. She said that wasn't very sure what she wanted to major in, and that she still had a lot of time before she had to make that decision. She insisted I told her why I was so interested in parapsychology, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to that. Bookworms are considered very normal in Harvard. However, one with paranormal experiences could be looked down as a weirdo. She was totally different from Betsy. She observed the punctuation while she talked and made the proper pauses when they were called for. Besides, she paid attention to what I said and tried to grasp what I said. Actually, I hadn't touched an attractive girl in about four months and Ron was beginning to attract me a lot. So, Joseph, aren't you going to tell me the reason for your interest in paranormal phenomena? I thought I'd ask her to just call me Joe like everyone else did except my dad. Yet, the way she said Joseph with that New Yorker's accent was so sexy that it started to get to me, and how so, I… Joseph? I couldn't stop looking at her. Let's make a deal. If you trust me enough to go on a date with me, I'll trust you enough to tell my story. She gave me the same glance from before. You're a very smart bargainer, aren't you? I try. Okay then. I'll check my schedule and call you tonight to give you an answer. Write your number down here, please. I wrote my number on the last page of her notebook and said, as I was giving it back to her. Friday is the only day I can't go out, cause the test is on Saturday morning. Okay. I've gotta go now. But, don't worry, I bet you'll be number one on the list. I looked at her with a lusty smile on my face and she understood it. On the test, silly. She kissed me on the cheek and left. I watched her go. I didn't really buy into that, but having a friend like that already meant a lot to me. Actually, I think we had already become good friends. I picked up my books, one after the other, as I'd remember the content of each one of them. I walked toward the car feeling very light. 
Then, I started wondering whether the spirits at Oles Park would ever feel that way if they counted on someone who would pay attention and give some affection to them. I was tempted to return there, but the idea of feeling that deep sadness again scared the life out of me. Maybe someday I would be able to help them, but not now. It was about 5 p.m. and I was driving back home. The end of summer's twilight is the most beautiful one in the entire East Coast. It happens when the summer heat begins. To give in to coolness of fall. I was thinking of the farm phenomenon described by Betsy, the storm of souls. Perhaps that twilight was also a, a paranormal phenomenon. Yet, since it is so easily seen and due to the peace it passes on to you, people ignored it. Maybe it was the just a calmness of the souls, but peace and quiet don't catch the interest of ordinary men. Who knows? Maybe one day all souls will find peace. In the evening, during dinner, I couldn't help wishing Ron called as soon as possible. Dad and Mom got themselves involved in some home issues, and and she was just waiting for the right opportunity to slash me. Who did you talk to this afternoon, Big J? Suddenly, I became the center of the family attention. Everybody stared at me at the same time. You know and you should create an official gossip hotline on campus, Dad glanced at her in disapproval. He hated gossip and and knew that very well. Sozzy. I just wanted to make conversation. If you don't want to, you don't have to answer. It was just a girl. That's all. See, it didn't hurt. Talking about personal things in Dad's presence always hurt. Won't that get you out of focus, Joseph? See what I mean? No, Dad. I'm only making some friends. I answer my dad, but my eyes were over Anne. Thank God she kept quiet after that. Later on, the telephone rang and and answered it, as usual. Just a second. Joseph, it's for you. I think it's Miss That's All. I walked to the phone. Dad and Mom were watching TV and they didn't notice the tone in N's voice. Thank you. I grabbed the phone. Yet, before she went away she said. She's from New York City, isn't she? You made quite a progress. Leave me alone, you witch. Go get on your fiancé's case instead, so she finally left. Hi, our phone conversation was very long and diverse. At the end we decided to go out on the following day. She said she wanted me to show her around the city since she was from New York. And she also said that I would have to open up with her. Then, on the following day, after we lunch on campus, we went on a date. The city of Boston is as old as America. Showing someone around a city like that is sort of like revising the whole history of the United States we saw in school. I took her to the Boston Harbor, where the tea party took place during the times of independence. I took her to Pasteur Institute. I showed her all the monuments I knew there were in Boston. Ron pay attention to everything I said and made me feel very confident to continue talking to her. I could easily fall for her. I drove a little apprehensively by Oles Park. It was also part of our history, perhaps even more than the other monuments, because everyone who fought for America in 300 years of history was buried there, at least the ones who were born in Boston. At dusk time I took her to a small park close by my house. It wasn't any historical place, but I wanted to show her the place where I grew up playing basketball, riding bicycles, and working on my first kisses. All of a sudden, we were all covered by the twilight, so we sat down and talked. So Joseph, I trusted you to show me around the whole city, would you trust me now? With that smile she could ask me to jump off of a cliff and I would do it. Sure. Do you know I have a brother buried in Oles Park? I sure do. Okay good. What happened was, I told her about Donnie showing up on the TV screen. She seemed to believe me and even share my feelings with me. Sometimes she touched my hand and I couldn't hold my emotion, like I said, it would be very easy to fall in love with her. I also told her about the phenomenon that occurred during my graduation and, at last, what happened at the veteran's graveyard right after I got into Harvard. Then she said, Oh my! Now that I come to think of it I remember that when we drove by there, you had such a sad expression on your face. You felt more than just your brother's absence, you felt the sorrow of all those spirits, didn't you? Kind of. I only remembered how I felt when that happened. Oh, my gosh, Joseph, she softly caressed my face and looked me straight in the eyes. It felt as if I was melting in her hands. And then we had our very first kiss. Eternity could pass by us in one minute due to the contact with such sweet lips. The park was empty. It was time for the children to be home taking a shower and getting ready for dinner. The elderly would only come there in the morning. Suddenly, it all started again. 
I began to sense the presence of people around us. I didn't want to stop kissing her, but I had to do that so to look around. I couldn't see anybody. Then, Ron asked. What is it, Joseph? I kept looking around. I don't know. It's just this weird feeling of extreme pleasure. Thank you, she said. I looked at her and smiled. Well, it's not only that, I. Then I saw it. There was another couple sitting on the next bench. They were using old clothes from the beginning of the century. I turned myself to Ron and asked. Do you see anyone sitting on that bench? She looked at it and confirmed my suspicions with her answer. Not a soul. I was experiencing another phenomenon. The couple seemed unbelievably happy. I felt like approaching them but didn't know how to proceed. Then I remembered the two German scientists. I wonder if they would ever experience such clearness as my visions allowed me to. Ron looked at me a bit confused. I was staring straight at an empty bench. I looked towards the next bench and saw yet another couple. Their clothes were different but their happiness was compatible. And then, several couples showed up and took over all the benches at the park. I was fascinated by that. It felt as if the feeling of happiness and pleasure that Ron and I had when we kissed had attracted couples of married spirits so they could live through their happy moments on earth again, just like the groups of graduates I saw during my graduation ceremony. Ron got my attention again. Are you seeing something, Joseph? I wanted to tell her, but I thought that would make her even more confused. I decided to take the easiest way out, I'd enjoy that moment with the other couples. Since I had attracted them, I'd simply let their moments last longer. No, nothing, Ron. Right now, I only see you. She smiled and we went back to our kissing. Occasionally, I'd open my eyes to see the other couples. I think they could see us too. The evening covered us completely and, as I had imagined in the day before, the twilight seemed to be the calmness of the souls, for, as I was surrounded by them, I felt an incredible peace of mind. Something transcendental. Ever since that day, I started to describe the phenomena I witnessed in writing and, at the same time, I tried to relate them to the emotions that would take over me the moment they happened. It was just an impression, but it seemed that the human emotional states were the strongest connection between the living and the dead. Whenever I experienced the phenomena, they passed on to me similar emotions to mine at those specific moments as if it was the key that opened the doorway in between the two worlds. As for Ron, I dated her for a long time, but that first kiss was unforgettable. 